Hey everyone, welcome back again to the channel. In this video, we are going to have a look at some basics of the Linux operating system. And especially in this particular video, we are going to focus on basic permissions for files and directories. This is a skill that might be useful, especially if you're planning to do a Linux system administrator exam, like the RHCSA, for example. And also in upcoming videos, I'm going to cover more about these topics because they basically are the foundations of the Linux operating system. And they might help you out also understand how the system works from the inside, beside doing installations, what we do every month or almost every week on this channel. So without further ado, let's get going. So hello everyone, welcome back to my desktop. So this video is gonna be a little bit different than the usual videos I do on the channel. This is not gonna be any kind of installation or review for that matter. It's gonna be about the basics of the Linux operating system. And specifically in this video, it's gonna be on the permissions of files and directories. Now, this is one of the essential skills also for Linux administrators that you will find if you are studying or if you want to prepare for a Linux certification. So let me pull up here the terminal, which I already prepared here. And as you can see, we have here our installation. This is Arch with the 5.10 kernel, and it has been updated today. Today is January 18th, 2021. So the first thing that I would like to do here is to use a command that you have seen for sure a lot of times, which is the ls command or the list command. So when we type in ls here, we get basically a list of, in this case, directories that are on my home folder. We recognize this is my home folder here by this tilde character and the dollar sign represents the fact that I'm logged in as a normal user and not as a root user. Now, we have also several variations of the ls command. One of the most popular is ls-l, which is a long listing of this directory, of my home directory. And as you can see, we have more information available here. So we have on the left side here of the screen, the permissions that we're gonna look in a second. The second column here represents the type. Now, the number two represents the fact that this is a directory. We have also the first part of the permissions here. The D represents also a directory. So number two represents a directory. We have the first field here with my name. This is representing the owner of the file. In this case, it's me. The second time you see my name here on this column, it's representing the group. So this directory basically belongs to me and belongs to my group. Now the 4096 here represents the size, which can be displayed also differently. I'm gonna show you this in a second. And then we have the date created and also the time created, and of course the name of the directory. Now let me clean up the terminal and let's pull up the last command here and add an H. H stands for human readable. So if I hit enter now, you can see actually the only big change here is the one representing the size because it tells me that the directories are around four kilobytes in size. So this is easier to read for us human beings, basically. Now, before we go into exploring the file permissions here, I just wanna spend a few words about the owner and the group. So the owner and the group here are assigned to me because these are my directories. This is of course my home directory. And I'll try to create a file now. I'll type in touch file1.txt and hit enter. And if I type in again ls-lh, you can see I have here also my new file and it has different permissions. Again, we are gonna look this in a second. The number one here, the type represents a file. The one stands for file, the two stands for directory. But the user owner and the group are the same because I created this file and it belongs also to me by default with my group. Why is that? Well, because every time we create a user in a Linux system, it assigns automatically itself to its own group. So if I type in, in here, for example, ID and hit enter, it tells me my user ID, it tells me also the group ID, and then it tells me also the groups I belong to, which is my group, the one that was created automatically when I created this user, and also the wheel group, because if you followed along one of the base installs of Arch Linux, you know that I always add the wheel group to my user so that I have pseudo privileges. So that's why it's appearing here. There are all sorts of ways to change ownerships of file and directories, but we are gonna look at them eventually in another video. For this video, we are going to concentrate on the file and directories permissions. So let's clean up the terminal and let me remove the file. 
and I'll type in again ls-lh. And we go back here to our directories. Now let's pay attention here to the first column on the left. So we can leave off the D because the D represents a directory, which we know already those are directories, but it's represented anyway here with the D. Now the ones that we need to pay attention to are the first three RWX, in the second column here the R and the X, and in the third column again the R and the X. So this represents the permissions of this directory. So why do we have three columns here? Well, because each one represents a different user. The first one represents the permissions of the owner, in this case me. The second column here represents the permissions of the group. And the third column represents the permissions to all other users. So having said that, what does it mean RWX and why it's different for group and others? So what does it mean RWX? I know this is very basic for some of you guys, but for those of you who hear this for the first time, it might be valuable information. So the R stands for read, so these are the read permissions. W stands for write, and X stands for execute. So that means the owner of this file has permissions of read, write, and execute. So all the possible permissions available for this directory. Now the group has read and execute permissions only but they don't have write permissions. And others have also read and execute permissions, and they don't have write permissions. Now, this is one way on how we can see the permissions on a directory on Linux. Now, let me type in again touch file1.txt and pull up again the list command. Now, you can see here the difference between the directories and the file. So the directories have permissions read, write, and execute for owner, whereas the file has only read and write for the owner. Group permissions for directories are read and execute, but the files are read only, and the same goes for other users. So for other users, directories are read and execute, and for the file are read only. So why is that? Well, this is a file and it's not a directory. So here, unless this is a shell script, there is nothing really to execute. However, if it is a shell script, we need to make this executable so that we can execute the script. In this case, we could use the chmod command that I'm going to show you after to put execute permission to the owner. Now, these are the default permissions for directories and for files in Linux. And each of these letters has also an octal correspondent or a number otherwise said. So for example, the R represents the number four, the W represents the number two, and the X represents the number one. So by calculating the permissions of the user on this directory, we have a permission of seven, four, two, one. On the group, we have a permission of five, four plus one. The write permission is not there, so this is considered a zero. And the same goes for other users. So we have on this directory a permission of 755. On the other side for the file, we do have different permissions by default. You can see we have read and write. So R is 4, W is 2, so this is a 6 for the owner. Group permissions are 4, and others are 4. So the default permissions for files are 644, and for the directory are 755. So why is this default actually there? What's the reason? Well, because by default in the Linux operating system, we have what's called a U mask. So the U mask, it's basically a value which is gonna define the basic permissions of your user. So if I type in here U mask and hit enter, you can see that a number returns here, 0022. Now let's forget the first zero because it belongs to a special permission which we are not gonna look in this video. Let's focus on the 022. So 022 are basically the numbers that are going to be subtracted by the 777 for directories and the 666 for files. So when we subtract here zero from the seven, we are gonna have seven. When we subtract 2 from the second 7, we're going to have 5. And when we subtract the second 2, we're going to have a 5 again on the other users. So that's why we have a default permission on directories of 755. The same goes for files. So the default file permissions here are 644, not 666, because we have 022. So from 666, if we subtract 022, we'll have 644. 
Now the umask value can be seen under the profile file under the Etsy directory. So we can type in vim slash etc slash profile and hit enter. And you can see I have it here on the first line, set our umask, umask 022. So this might be different in other Linux distributions where the umask is not on the first line. So you can just search for that if it's not there. But in any case, if you want to change this, this is not the place where you should change your umask. So for example, if you want to say that you want to give also the groups, the full permissions, don't do it here. So let's exit this file, but do it rather in the bash profile. So let's type in vim and then dot bash underscore profile and hit enter then you could enter here insert mode and type for example umask and then the new value that you want to have for example 0002 to allow also group owners to have full permissions then once you save the file you need to basically source the bash profile or exit the terminal and reopen it again and the new values will be there so let me exit this file here and clean up the terminal ls-l h and we are back to our listing so before we continue here, just a small explanation about read, write, and execute. So read for a directory means you can basically read the content of the directory. Write, meaning of course you can write files in the directory. And execute basically means you can read through the tree of the directory. But if you don't have other permissions, you won't be able to open or read anything else. So on a file, of course, read and write is self-explanatory. And the execute permission will be useful, of course, if the file is a shell script. Now, in this case, for example, you can see the file one txt file does not have the execute permissions as well also for the group owners and also the other users. So let's say, for example, that we want to change the permissions of the desktop directory and we want to give also the group write permissions. So we have two ways to do this. We can use the letters or we can use the octal method. This is really up to you. The octal method represents the numbers I told you about before. So let's change this first with the letters. So to do this, we can type in sudo. We need to tap sudo because this operation can be done only from the root user or from a person who has sudo privileges. And then chmod, which is the command to changing permissions. Now we want to change the permissions of the group. So we need to type in g for group and then plus because we want to add a permission and the write permission it's w and then the directory we want to change the permission for is the desktop directory and then hit enter now we need to enter our sudo password and now this is done so if i type in again ls you can see we have now a w added to the group permission now let's say we want to do the same here for the documents directory but this time we're going to use the octal method so as I said before, R represents the number four, W represents the number two and X number one. So this is a seven. For the group right now, we have a five. So if we wanna give also the group owner here write permissions, that means we're gonna have also a seven here. So we have four and one, which is five. We're gonna give the W, which is two. So representing the command, we're gonna type in sudo chmod again, and then seven, seven, five in this case and then documents and hit enter. Now again, if I type in ls, you can see we have the same permissions. Now, what if we wanna actually remove the write permissions to the group into the desktop directory? Well, we're gonna type in sudo chmod again, and again, g because it's the group permission, and then minus because we want to remove the permission, w because we want to remove the write permission, and then let's say the desktop directory and hit enter. Now let's type in again ls, and you can see we are back where we were in the beginning. Now what if we wanna actually remove the execute permissions for other users? So other users are represented by the letter O, group are represented by the letter G, and user is represented by the letter U. So U, G, O, or U go. So in this case, we want to use the O. So to remove the execute permissions from this directory, we are going to type in sudo chmod O minus X, because we need to remove the execute permission, and then the desktop directory, and hit enter. Now, if I type in again ls, you can see other users have only read permissions. So to show you all the permissions at once here, we can type in, for example, sudo chmod so let's say we want to change the permissions of the file in this case. So we want to give execute permission to the owner. So we're going to type in u because it's a user plus x. And then we need to define the file, which is file one. 
and then chmod and we're going to give the group for this file write permissions so g plus w and then we need to specify the file and then the last command we're going to type in chmod we're going to remove also the read permissions for other users so o minus r and then the file name and hit enter now let's see the result here and as you can see i gave execute permissions to the owner of the file i gave also write permissions to the group and i removed all permissions to other users so these are the basics for permissions if you have any questions about these let me know in the comments below and as usual i will try to answer you as soon as i can so there you go guys these are the basic permissions on the linux operating system in upcoming videos we are going to have a look at special permissions and also to acl or access control lists if you have any questions about the video let me know in the comments below and i hope also that you liked the video if you did please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already subs always helps me out and if you want to support my work you can do so by visiting the patreon website or you can donate via paypal as well Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.